Recap. Bonin sits waiting for me, and then I say, Okay, let's go back now. Let's go. They agree, and I jump through the back of the window where we go to a shore and see a big do- door that could be used as a boat. I push them out and gesture to go on the door, and they do. I then jump on and slowly float on wa- on the water to the pale city. While we float across what I think is the ocean, we sat on the door for what felt like hours, but not a word was said until Mono broke the silence with the question. So, what were you going to do before this? And if I didn't ask you to come with us, where would you be now? I was caught a bit off guard by his question, but I then said my answer. Well, I would still be in the forest and raiding the hunter's house, then go to a more peaceful way of life, you know? Mono then says, oh, uh, I'm sorry. He looked down and then Six looked away, thinking it was their fault that I I couldn't have a somewhat normal life because I agreed to come with them. I then say, but it accepts. It's exciting to know you have a goal, and might as well help you, right? I smile and put my hands on my head, on their heads, and they both look at me with a smile, and they hug me. I try to discra- distract the conversation to something that doesn't concern the other topic. But then I, we hear a thud that sh- shakes the door, and then I notice we're outside the city, where... We all got off and went to the door with a light under it and went inside. It was much more worse than it looked like from the outside. It had broken floors. I looked up to see clothes hanging, kind of looking kind of looking like someone was hanging, but it was just clothes hanging out of a television. At least, I think it was. We continued to walk into the building and there was a window. And Mona goes first, st- stepping on something below him, and he says, There's a box below me. We're good. Me and Six then follow Mono. I get out to see we're in a street or something, maybe an alleyway? Not sure. It has a. We step out, and it has boxes in a line that seems to go out, but I ignore it. I look to my right and see the window is open. A window is open. I gesture over, and they have both follow me. I jump in the window and fall to the floor, which was kind of far, but I'm fine. I warn them it's a bit far down and to prepare themselves, and they jump to the floor with me. We walk through this kind of restaurant that has clothes sitting on seats as if there were customers. We kept walking, and we see a broken door that's small enough for us to go in. There was another door, which was... Another door, which was very small, with with a very small hallway, maybe just a foot or two, but that's it. We then come into a room where there were televisions that I think were broken, and some, and all of them were connected, and walked to this little room where there was a window, but none of us could get up on our own. I say. How about one of us get two of us to the other side, and then two of us will explore the other side. And we'll call up for them to help the other other side on the other side. Fuck. What the hell? They nodded, and Six agreed to push us both, and we also agreed. We both got pushed to the other room, and and it was kind of empty. I then noticed there was a rope that went... And the television, and the television that also had a rope that went up. I just put two and two together, and soon the ropes were connected. So I told Mono that, and he agreed. I then jumped up and grabbed the rope. I then said to Mono, "Grab, jump and grab onto me. I'll do the rest." He then says, "Okay." He then jumps and grabs my stomach. And I sway back and forth and I yell, hold on. I then kick the television and it drops and sends us up. And I feel Mono gripping um, onto my stomach even more. But it's fine since he has to. We both go to the floor above and see a ledge with some stairs behind us. 
and then a broken part that leads to another floor. I then say, okay, I'm going to swing you to the ledge, and you have to let go when you know you can jump, okay? He then says, okay. I swing back and forth a few times, and I get the momentum, and he jumps off and lands on the edge. I then say, great now, wait for me. I swing a bit before jumping and landing on the edge. I then hug Mono and say, okay, oh, oh we can get six up here. I then yell, Six, stand on the TV with the rope and hold on. She does, and I say, and then turn to Mono and say, Push down the TV. He then does as I say, and Six goes to the floor above us and jumps to the platform. I grab Mono's hand and run to, to the cutoff stairs, and we see Six extending her hand, and I let Mono go first, and he jumps to the other side, and then I do. We got on and went to the next floor together and got across. The small gap in Six almost fell, and I caught her, just in time. I quickly hugged her and then held both of their hands, and we walked forward. We go through another room that has clothes hanging that looks like a person hanging. Again. We then go into the next room and hear a ringing noise. It then goes black and fuzzy for a few seconds before I feel like I was thrown to the ground and see Mono looking a bit dizzy and Six looking the same. I then shake my head and sit for a while before seeing Mono and Six get up and sit with me. I then say, anyone hungry? Mono and Six say, yes. I then take out a small pot with, and then put the meat inside with some oil and make a fire under it and cook it. We wait for a bit for the meat to be done and I had and see their eyes light up like disco balls and start to scarf down their food. Six then says, thank you, nine. Mono then says, thank you, nine. I then say, no problem, it's fine. And then take a bite out, out of the food and take out some salt and pepper and sprinkle some on mine and take a bite. I then see Six and Mono stare before saying, what's that? I then say, salt and pepper? They then say, what's that? Uh, I'll show you. I then sprinkle some on theirs and I say, try it, it's nice. They hesitate to bite it but they did anyway and they say wow this is amazing and smile i then say thanks we sat there a while before getting ready to jump out the window and see a school building i stare up at the building and go to the gate looking look around and the opening but it's behind a dumpster i then say hey can you help me move the dumpster they say okay they move the dumpster out the way, and I go to the opening and get into the front of the school. It was a bland playground with a seesaw and a uh, and a goalie for soccer, but that's it. Before we try to find a way in, I heard the seesaw rock back and forth, and I see Mono and Six playing on it. I was about to ask about to ask them to get off, but then I decide not to ruin their fun and just sit back and relax for a while before hearing the seesaw stop and see them getting off, having smiles on their faces. Well, at least six, six is since I can't see Mono's, but it's fine. But it's there. I know it. I then take notice of a makeshift rope to the window, to the second floor of the building. I claim... I climb up it, and Mono and Six follow me up the rope. We then get in, and see, and I see a room that seems to have coat hangers to the wall with coats and backpacks, a literal hanger on a coat hanger, and a trash can on fire. I'm not even surprised if there's other monsters like the hunter. Of course, they could be at least kind of dumb, but we are. We need to keep going. We go through the place and we go into a space where children must have stayed due to the mess men of toys and beds. Mona and Six take something as a little gift for themselves and I find it adorable. <laughs> we go to we go to the room going forward and see a painting of a monster or someone that was affected by the tower, but her eyes were pitch black 
and it didn't look right. Mono then turned off the lights, and before I was about to yell at them to yell at him to turn it back on, the black holes in her eyes were actually holes to a different room. I then went back into what I think was a nursery and grabbed a toy and chucked it at the painting, and it falls to the ground, revealing an opening. And notices Six hesitates a bit, but I grab her hand and smile at her. She then smiles back, and I took Mono's hand and followed me through the opening in the wall. We went in. It was a kind of torture chair with a rope around it and marks on the walls. I was disgusted, and it showed on my face. Mono then says, The floorboards here are weak. It might be an entrance. I then say, Good job. Thanks for the help, Mono, but could you both help me with breaking it? They then nod, and all all together, we jump on it, not for long, and it breaks under us. It wasn't that deep. Six then says, Look! She points at the left of us in a tunnel kind of thing. We went through it. We then get to a ledge that was sort of a step design. Going down it, I go down the ledge and then jump down to the ledge. But then I hear Mono and Six six kind of scream, Wait! I then say, Oh, sorry, uh, I should have waited and shown you. I'm fine. They both sigh in relief and they come down with me. And go down to another step, reaching a vent. I then try to open the damn thing, but only opening slightly before I say, Could you help me a bit? They both nod and quickly open the thing. I crouch crouch as I move in the vents and crouch through them. I then see a slight light and see the opening in front of me, and I jump to the ground. Okay, to be continued. So, uh, sorry if this wasn't wasn't that eventful. But next one is going to be very eventful. I swear, the next part is going to be very nice. I've already done it, but I'm going to wait till next week, and I'm also going to upload a different video. So, uh, this one is over. Go check out my Twitter. Uh, also, uh, if you have any other ideas, uh, don't worry about it. Uh, if you have any ideas, just put in the comments. And I love to see your comments, so don't hesitate. And put up a thumbs up and subscribe. Love you guys, and uh, have a good time zone or wherever the hell you are in this world. (laughs)